Perhaps the thing that Kulmbach is most famous for is the beer festival in August, but I visited in the much quieter month of April, all the better to see what else the town has to offer. And this is the speciality of Kulmbach, two sausages served in an aniseed bun. Very nice. Back in the 15th century, Kulmbach was ruled by a branch of the Hohenzollern family who were also the Margraves of Brandenburg. For this reason, it was known as the Margraviate of Brandenburg Kulmbach, despite not actually being a march. A march is a territory on a border. A feud between the Hohenzollerns and the Gutenbergs led to the creation, in 1498, of a system of watchtowers, one of which is the Rehturm on a hill overlooking Kulmbach. Originally there were 13 of them, although in later centuries more were added. Many still exist, although now rebuilt or reconfigured as viewing platforms. In the event of an attack, a signal could be sent in the form of beacons to the administrative seat of the Principality, the Plassenburg Fortress. The fortress that is there now is not the fortress originally protected by the watchtowers. That was destroyed in 1554, after the Second Margrave War. It was rebuilt in the modern Renaissance style and is one of Germany's largest buildings of that era. It now houses, among other things, the world's biggest collection of tin soldiers. According to one myth, a 14th century lady of the castle, the widowed Kunigunde of Orlamunde, due to an unfortunate misunderstanding, thought her children stood in the way of her remarriage, and so killed them. After her death, she appeared to members of the Hohenzollern family to warn them of misfortune, one of the first ghost stories of its type. Some of medieval Kulmbach still exists, including parts of the town's defences. There are fragments of wall and some towers and gates. The original St. Peter's Church was destroyed in 1430. Rebuilt as a fortified church with cannons on top of the tower, it was destroyed again about a hundred years later and rebuilt once more. The old bathhouse goes back to the 14th century. Once a common feature in any medieval town, there were two others in Kulmbach alone, it is now one of only eight in Germany that have been restored and studied. It's now open as a museum and art gallery. Although Kulmbach dates back to the 11th century, it was almost completely destroyed by fire in 1553, razed to the ground by enemy troops, and so most of the historic centre is not medieval, but Renaissance and Baroque. The Langheim official court served as offices for the administration of land owned by a nearby monastery which, like so many, was far wealthier than a religious institution needed to be. Where once a small hospital chapel stood, an ornate church was constructed. The town hall was given an especially opulent Rococo facade, the tower decorated with the statues of Prudentia and Lady Justice, symbolising the need for prudence and justice in governance. The princess's house was built in 1722 for the young Margravin Christiana Zofi, who was banished here after giving birth to twins, despite not being married. The Zinsfeld Fountain was once in the main market square but had to be moved here in the 19th century to the timber market. The column represents the four seasons. The figure is carrying a short flagpole. 
According to popular legend, it's a statue of a soldier in the Thirty Years' War who fought to the last with only a broken flagpole as a weapon. In truth, it's a mixture of two symbols representing a market. The soldier is Roland from northern Germany, the flagpole refers to the southern tradition of raising a flag on market days. Kulmbach today is a small town of 26,000 people, still relatively remote, but a minor tourist attraction. And if centuries-old architecture is not your thing, there's still the annual beer festival. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.